Hey, welcome to part two of the Steampunk Shoulder Armor Tutorial Pattern Tutorial Tutorial. I am still wearing my mechanical arm because I love it. And I'm allowed to because this is my basement. If you haven't already watched part one, there's a link in the description below or in the upper right hand corner. But other than that, let's just get making. All right, so I'm gonna start by adding fancy bits and pieces to the main torso piece. But before I start on that, I'm going to heat up the pauldron and the pauldron flappy bit, wrap them with some cling wrap so they stay really curled up and want to stay curled up for the rest of their life. They can just hang out like that while I'm working on the other part. Grab a piece of corrugated plastic tubing from the sky and cut three pieces that fit between the edge of the nut and the edge of the circle, which for the medium size pattern is 25 millimeters long. Now you can use a pair of scissors to cut each piece in half. The position of these tubing pieces will be fairly important when we add the wire, so try to line them up as shown here. If you run a straight edge from the upper left tube, it should create a line parallel to the top line of the kind of rectangular piece. Once you're happy with the positioning, glue the tubing down, being careful not to use too much glue because it's pretty hard to clean up on the outside of those tubes. And now you can glue the center nut. Grab that pen you almost threw away but didn't, take out the inside penny bit, and mark the case every two and a half centimeters. Oh, actually you're gonna need two pens to get enough pieces. Now cut along the marks. I like to use a tubing cutter for this because it makes a nice straight cut and it also rounds off the ends beautifully. Push your little pen pieces into their tubes, leaving 20 millimeters sticking out. Then use super glue to glue them down onto the foam. Piece 24 is made the right size for if you didn't have those pen pieces sticking out. But since we do, we need to stretch it all the way around. That way we'll have enough extra length to go over the pens. Now glue it down section by section, forming it around each of the pens. Glue the last three pen pieces equally spaced in the not quite rectangular box. We probably need a strap to hold down those sensitive components, so let's glue down piece 37. I use the end of a ruler to jam it down in between the pens. Okay, let's wire this contraption up. The wire I'm using is old telephone wire, but you can use whatever you can get your hands on. This process can be a bit of trial and error, but basically it involves bending the wire to follow the path you want it to go, and then gluing it down with super glue. As they say, a picture's worth a thousand words, so rather than trying to explain where every wire goes, I'll just let you sit back and watch. If you find yourself struggling to get the bends in the right places, it can often be helpful to draw the path on the foam first and then bend your wire to follow it. Alright, your fancy wires should be all glued, now it's time to go back to the foam bits. Piece 29 gets glued over the end of that wire there, then piece 30 here and here. A couple 12mm discs cut out and stacked on top of each other make a great screw head to go on top of the nut. Cut two parallel lines part way down through the foam disc, then connect the cuts across the bottom, and then you've got a nice slot for your screwdriver when you need to tighten up that nut if it gets loose. Now cut 10 more 12 millimeter discs and glue each one in the center of a piece 23, which then gets a six millimeter hole punched in its center. Glue five of those discs over the holes you punched in the neck guard and the other five on the shoulder piece directly across from each neck disc. Now's a good time to add some fake rivets to each disc using your pen. See if you can find an old power cord that no one would mind if it got completely destroyed and cut five five centimeter lengths. Give them each a good sharp bend so they stay a little bit curved and use super glue to glue them into the discs. Piece 31 gets glued onto the back and a whole bunch of fake rivets get made all over the place. I even used the back of my pen for one piece just to change it up. And because you can never have too many rivets, I'm gonna make my favorite type of rivets using five minute two part epoxy. Squirt out equal parts of epoxy, mix it super duper well, and use a match head to apply a small drop wherever you want a rivet. This technique does take a bit of practice and has been known to be frustrating for some people, so use at your own risk of frustration. I used these rivets on the top of the neck guard, on the corner pieces, on the little tab things, and right here. To finish it off, we probably need some 6mm screw heads around the ring that holds the power station device in place. Don't want that to fall out. Lose all your power to your shoulder. Okay, onto the pauldron. 
piece 13, piece number 7, piece 15, a cute little grill, piece 14 on top of piece 13, piece 8 on top of piece 7, piece 9 on top of piece 8, piece 10 and 11 on top of piece 7, and piece 12 on top of piece 8 and 11. Now take piece 22 and stretch out the center a bit. You can just use your hands, or if you happen to have a knee, you could use that too. Apply glue up the middle section and glue it into place, centered along the center line of the pauldron. Now glue down the sides, trying to keep it as smooth as possible. Glue down piece 16, leaving about a 10 millimeter gap between it and the rim around the pauldron. Glue pieces 17, 18, and 20 on top of piece 16, and 19 on top of piece 18. The fan blade thing gets jammed in the hole so that it domes outward and looks really cool. Pressing down a little bit in the middle helps it not look too pointy. Glue it in with some super glue. 39, 39, and 39 line up nicely right here. A little V cut in a leftover piece of edging allows it to cover up the top pauldron seam. Glue the ends of piece 26 together to form a little tube. That tube gets glued down to piece 27, centered as best as possible. Use a very small amount of glue to glue the cover piece down to the side of the cylinder in four equally spaced places. Next apply glue to one of the unglued sections and work it down against the side of the tube with your fingers. The look we're going for here is a metal cap that's been crimped down over top of the tube, so we're happy with a few little ripply bumps. Again, if you don't want to burn yourself, use a glue gun set at a low temperature. Repeat this process for the other three sections, and you've got a neat little capped housing for your burner coil, which we're going to make right now with two strips of foam 45 and a half centimeters long, one 17 millimeters wide, and the other 9 millimeters wide. Glue one on top of the other, lining up one of the long edges. I'm going to paint mine with a bit of red and a bit of black to give it a kind of hot element vibe. We're going to need to paint both sides, but try not to paint the lower portion of the strip because that's where we're going to be applying the glue. Once the paint is dry, roll it up like a little cinnamon bun and glue it. It'll be a bit tricky to paint the front of the housing later with the coil installed, so we might as well do it now. I also added a bit of brass accent to the coil for some extra zing, and a 12mm disc to cover the center. Push the coil into the housing, and glue the housing onto the shoulder. Note that the housing is not placed in the center of piece 22, but more towards the front. Glue some 9mm discs here, 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 and here. And some 6mm discs here, here, here and here. Also all around here. And we might as well just go crazy and make them all into screw heads. Hopefully you're not tired of cutting discs yet because we need 12 more 12 millimeter discs, which get 9 millimeter discs glued on top of them. These go here, 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 and here. Now give them each a really good poke with a pen so that we can stick our wire in them. We'll also cut some little slots in the top of the three piece 39s for the same reason. And now it's time to get funky with some wires. the wires. We just need to pretend to hold them down with some little tabs like number 40 here, and number 30 here, here, and here. Add some fake rivets with your pen, and some more fake rivets with some epoxy and a match. Don't forget that the little flappy bit for the pauldron needs some fake rivets too. Right now your armor looks a bit like a clown suit, so be sure to make the most of it before you get out your paint. Start by painting it with black artist's acrylic paints. I like to give it three coats of black paint, so the paint really fills in the pores of the foam and gives me a nice smooth non-porous surface when it comes time to apply the metallics. Once your three coats are dry, put on a rubber glove and grab your metallic paints. I'm using Basics Bronze for all the background color. Take a tiny bit of paint and then spread it out on the cardboard until there's almost none on your finger, and then rub it on the foam. The great thing is that because your finger is shaped like a finger, it doesn't apply the paint right to the edges, which is actually a good thing when you're trying to make it look like old oxidized metal. In the places where my fingers can't reach, I use a tiny amount of paint on a brush and apply it mainly down the center so it fades off to each side. If you end up rubbing paint in places you shouldn't be rubbing, it's easy enough to go back with some black and cover it up. 
Next I'll pull out my DecoArt Americana Decor Metallics paints, which I'm using thanks to DecoArt's Helping Artists program. The first color I'm going to use is Vintage Brass. Right now my favorite silver color is actually a 50-50 mix of DecoArt Metallics Pewter and their silver. Now grab an old belt, cut it in two, and glue one end to the front and the other to the back. Obviously you're going to want to try it on first before you start gluing to make sure the straps are going to line up the best way for your body. I made sure to give the belt and the foam a quick sand with some coarse sandpaper to give the hot glue something to grip on. Glue a piece of elastic inside the flappy bit to keep it attached to your arm, and then install the hinged rivets as per my other video. And all that's left is to attach the pauldron with a piece of webbing and some glue. All right, super cool shoulder. Just so you know, there's three sizes to the pattern. There's a large, medium, and small. This is the medium. So the large is bigger, the small is smaller. And if you wanna get your hands on the pattern, I'll have links here at the end of the video, as well as in the description. Hey, so maybe some of you are wondering, what will this look like on a female body? And I don't have a lot of female bodies in my house, but I do have one right here. It's my wife, Lorinda. So I asked her to try it on, and this is what it looks like. This is a size small, it's not finished. I just glued this on here for now, that's why it's kind of coming off there. But it gives you a little bit of an idea what the pattern will look like on a female torso. And this is the medium on a bit of a larger lady. And so that's how that looks on a hard bodied <laughs> female. However, I do realize that there's lots of different sizes and shapes of people. So if you make the pattern and find you have to do some alterations to get it to fit, please let me know and I will update the pattern to have a female torso version as well so that everyone can be happy and have something that fits them easily and awesomely. Thanks for watching. See ya. And don't forget the pattern, wherever it is. And also, if you haven't seen the mechanical <laughs> arm video and want to make that, you can do that too by clicking a link in the description. The end. <laughs>